Imagine everyone watching this video has been told at least once that Python doesn't have private attributes. But what if I told you that it did? And then what if I told you that it didn't? It's a very confusing and complicated issue and it's thrown off a number of people both thinking that it doesn't have private attributes and that it does because it does have this special syntax to do it but that's not really what it's designed for. So in this video I'm going to be explaining what the confusion is all about, I'm going to be showing you the implementation of it and I'm going to be talking you through what it's actually designed to be used for. Of course if you found this video helpful at any point then consider liking it to let me know and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like it. If you're feeling extra generous and want to support the channel further you can do so by becoming a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. Anyway, that out of the way, let's talk about Python's private attributes. So to start, I'm going to create a class just called test. And we're going to create a class attribute and we're just going to call this class attribute. Uh, but we're going to have this um, double underscore syntax here. And then we're going to create an instance uh, method. Let's say, actually, let's say we take x, which is an int, or like a string or something, and then we do instance attribute like here, and then we do, say, like uh, instance, and then, you know, whatever string you pass through. Uh, and this syntax works exactly the same on instance attributes as it does on class attributes. It also works exactly the same on methods, uh, so if I were to do this, for example, and then have it return self.instance attribute, uh, that would uh, function exactly the same. So if we come down here and we do our run guard uh, main, there we go. I forgot how that worked then for a second. Uh, and then we do print, let's do test.class attribute to begin with. And then we could do t equals test uh, and then just hello, I guess. And then we can do print t dot instance attribute. And if we were to run this now, we could see that we get an error saying type object test has no attribute class attribute. Did you mean class? If we then get rid of this, we can see that we get the same error, though we get a slightly spoilery error. Attribute error test object is no attribute instance attribute. Did you mean? underscore test, double underscore instance atra. Um, and this error kind of spoils the surprise of what's going on under the hood there. Uh, and if we try and run the method, so t dot method, oops, t dot method like that, we'll get the same error test as no um, object as no attribute method. So what's going on here is when you define anything with a double underscore syntax like this, Python, takes it upon itself to make it harder for others outside of the class to access it. So it will append an underscore and then the name of the class in front of the variable name. But only if you're running it outside. If you're running it inside, um, so if I just do this and then do this, uh, I'm running the method, but you can see actually if I print it, that would be a bit better that it's actually able to access this attribute internally. So in a way, it sort of does work like private attributes, um, but also not so much because you can still access them. They still appear in messages. And if I were to do dear t, they would still appear. Uh, oh, I need to print that as well, don't I? Uh, they would still appear here. And not only that, they would appear at the start. You can actually get around this last thing, this deer. If you wanted to throw people off a little bit more, you could do like define a dunder deer and then take self and that returns an iterable of string that we need to import uh, from typing import iterable and then come down here. If we do return filter, when I can type, that'd be nice. Lambda x not x dot starts with and then you could do something like uh, self dot class dot name if you wanted it to be portable if you didn't want it to be portable you could just put the class name in here and it would be fine that's not what I wanted to do at all and if we do that around super dot dear like that 
If we then run dir of t, we then get rid of those things so they don't actually appear in the directory. So if you wanted to throw people off using that, you could, but obviously the errors from 3.11 question mark onwards, maybe 3.10. Uh, will give away the game anyway. Now to actually show you real quick that that does actually work. So if we did print uh, test underscore test class attribute, and then if we did print t dot underscore test double underscore instance atra, and then if we did print t underscore test double underscore method, if you run all those, um, it will still complain, which is interesting. Why is that complaining? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I <laughs> I removed the double underscore, didn't I? Yeah, okay, that makes more sense now. So if I do then this again, that should know. I thought I'd uncovered something that I'd missed then. Uh, and then this won't work anymore. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Well, fine. That's good enough. It's just, it shows it is accessing it. I forgot to call it because it's a method. Uh, but you will see that my pi does complain. So it says that type test has no attribute test class atro because it's not defined up here and the type system doesn't know um, that these exist because these get created at runtime. So if you use these, they're not statically type safe. So if you want to create type safe code and I guess you could say they are actually private but yeah it's a it's a weird one you may be wondering what the actual point of these uh, attributes and methods actually is and the idea is it's not private per se it's done to avoid name collisions so to demonstrate that if I were to create a second class uh, called test2 and then that inherits from test. If I were to specify a class atra here and have it be new class attribute, and then if I were to go down to the bottom here, I have to get rid of all this because it's really horrid, and then print test two dot underscore test class atra, and then if I were to do the same but have test two class atra you'll see they actually print different things. So this underscore test prints the uh, the attribute from this class, but underscore test two then prints the attribute from uh, this class. But because test two inherits, go away, from test, it inherits this test uh, dunder, oh, no, it's, it's not dunder technically, is it? Underscore underscore class actra, but then it also has its own one for Reasons that are beyond me. I don't really understand <laughs> why you would need these. In all complete honesty, I can't really think of a use case for name collision logic like this. I feel like if you're doing something that requires this to be a thing, you should probably do it differently or, you know, yeah, find some other way to do it. Ideally as well, if you did want to provide private attributes, then you should really follow the naming convention of just using a single underscore and then if we get rid of all this crap. And then you'd have a property here that did def instance atra self and then return string and then return self dot underscore instance atra. And then you could set a setter if you wanted to and that would take value and then it would, um, you would then define your setting logic from there. Uh, sort of like maybe, um, have I, oh, because that's a decorator. Yeah, that's not how you do it at all. Uh, and then that would be instance, might as well complete this example while we're here. And then that would be, I suppose, technically an object, but you could do it however you wanted. And then you could just have self equals value. You could do some other validation, yada, yada, yada. So this would be the way you would ideally want to do it. If you wanted a read only, you just do this. If you wanted something that was completely private, you wouldn't have properties at all. And you just have it like this. I'm very much a proponent of if people do, or if people break something by doing something they're not supposed to be doing, that's their fault, not yours. So if they break something by accessing this and then, you know, that's their own problem. But yeah, it's, it's worth keeping in mind that nothing is truly private in Python. Uh, even though things may seem to be on the surface. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about with regards to Python's private, in air quotes, attributes. 
If you have any questions on what you've seen here or any ideas of videos that you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I'd like to say a big thank you to my members and patrons on screen now, especially Mazard Rosherman III for being so generous. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about some neat optimizations that you can do in Python. So that is not one to miss.